Let's talk about the single most important component of any vehicle on the road, electric or otherwise. It's something called the platform. We as the general public will typically identify a vehicle by the look of the outer shell, its aesthetic. So Model 3, Mustang, Daewoo Lanos, all instantly recognizable iconic designs on the outside, but the true essence of a vehicle goes more than skin deep. It's what's on the inside that truly counts. The platform is what makes a car more than just a metal box on wheels. The platform will ultimately define the performance, the efficiency, and the manufacturability of any given automobile. This is something that Tesla recognized at a very early point in their development of the Model S, and it's something that allowed them to build the foundational platform that would lie at the heart of nearly every electric vehicle to follow the skateboard. And now, 10 years later, Tesla is redefining the electric vehicle platform with yet another fundamental innovation that will change automotive design for the future. This is why they did it. Actually, General Motors invented the first electric vehicle skateboard platform before Tesla. Someone literally just wrote that in the comment section by the time the intro was finished. Yeah, that's right, I see you. And you're not wrong, but not necessarily right either. It's complicated. Here's the scoop. In January 2002, General Motors introduced a concept vehicle named the Autonomy. It was a ridiculous spaceship looking thing that was envisioned to be powered by hydrogen fuel cells and would be fully autonomous with no mechanical controls for steering, brakes, or acceleration. The concept showed a body sitting on top of a fully independent platform that essentially looked like a big skateboard, hence the name. So the idea was that you could put any style of vehicle body you want on top of one common platform. Very cool concept, but it was just that, a concept, not a real car. Now, to their credit, GM actually did build a car on a hydrogen fuel cell skateboard platform. This is the Highwire. It didn't look anything like the hyper-futuristic autonomy, which is probably why this car has been mostly forgotten about, but this was a real functional electric car. The Highwire even featured on Top Gear, and it was driven around a parking lot by James May to demonstrate the steer-by-wire controls. May found it more like playing a video game than driving a car. And during the Top Gear segment, they demonstrated the body being lifted off the chassis and revealed the functional hydrogen fuel cell skateboard platform. Again, it didn't look anything like the concept design, but it did work. The Highwire had a single front axle electric motor that produced 80 brake horsepower and could reach a top speed of 100 miles per hour. James May says in his report that there is only one high wire in the entire world and that GM had valued it at 5 million British pounds, the equivalent of about 10 million US dollars at the time. In 2003, GM confidently announced it could produce a commercially viable version of the platform by 2010. That didn't happen. According to one version of events, the people in charge at GM went to speak with the people in charge at ExxonMobil, the world's largest petroleum manufacturer, and GM wanted assurance that Exxon would provide consumers with the hydrogen filling infrastructure necessary for the fuel cell platform to actually become viable. ExxonMobil said no. Unsurprisingly, at the time, gasoline was still cheap as hell, so it seemed foolish to throw money at an alternative fuel source. The prices would spike up rapidly in the following years after George Bush and Co's botched invasion of Iraq, but they didn't know that was going to happen. So instead of making any attempt to modify the design, like say replacing the hydrogen fuel cell with batteries, GM had a battery powered electric car back in the 90s that they just threw in the garbage and ignored, which would be the same fate of the hydrogen skateboard. They just scrapped the project and pretended like it never happened until Tesla came along. Then you get people like Joe Biden trying to tell us that actually GM led the electric vehicle revolution. This is the stuff he's referring to. GM had a cool but flawed idea for a battery electric car. They couldn't make it work and they gave up. Then they had a cool but flawed idea for an electric skateboard platform, but they couldn't make that work and they gave up. The second electric vehicle to be featured on Top Gear was the Tesla Roadster in 2008. 
It brought significantly better performance than the Highwire, but the Tesla was lacking in much of the futuristic design innovations. The Roadster was based on the platform of a mid-engine rear-wheel drive Lotus Elise sports car. It's not the same platform, the Roadster only shares about 6% of the Elise components and has a 2-inch longer wheelbase. So Tesla had a unique chassis design, but it was produced for them by Lotus using the same materials and process as the Elise. Anyway. Since this was not a fully optimized EV platform, the Roadster battery modules were just stacked up directly behind the front seats, in the space where the Lotus engine would have gone. And the Tesla electric motor was placed lower down to the rear in the space previously occupied by the Lotus transmission and differential. So all in all, a very cool car, but still pretty far from the viable EV platform. Everything changes with the Model S. Following Elon Musk's master plan, the company was using the money they made from selling the Roadster to design the world's first mass-produced fully electric sedan. And to do this, they employed a model called First Principles Thinking. They started with a clean sheet of paper and designed a platform with the battery pack and power electronics fully integrated into the chassis. Putting all of the battery modules in one flat layer at the center of the chassis for the most even weight distribution and the lowest possible center of gravity. Then they put a traditional sedan body and frame on top of it. So it looked like a normal car on the outside, but on the inside was this battery powered electric skateboard. And Tesla built more than one, they built thousands of Model S sedans. And then they leveraged the skateboard to build thousands of Model X SUVs same platform, they just dropped a different body on top. And the skateboard was designed to be modular, so customers could choose different battery pack sizes, and they could have either single motor rear wheel drive or dual motor all wheel drive. These days, it doesn't matter what brand of electric car you buy, they are all going to be based on a very similar skateboard platform that originated in the Model S. Unless you buy a hydrogen fuel cell electric car, then you'd be getting the true General Motors original skateboard, but there are only like two of those cars in production, neither even made by GM, and they only really work inside the state of California. So yes, Tesla did not design the first electric vehicle skateboard platform ever, but they did design the first fully functional battery powered electric vehicle skateboard that was suitable and sustainable for mass production. And it required zero cooperation from the fossil fuel industry to make it happen. And now in their second decade of mass production, Tesla is reinventing the EV skateboard platform into something even more efficient, more integrated, and more production friendly. At the company's battery day in 2020, Tesla revealed the evolution of their skateboard platform, a more simplified and optimized design than ever before. At the heart of the new platform is the structural battery pack. The big change here is that instead of integrating the battery modules into the chassis, the battery pack is the chassis, and the chassis is the battery pack. In the Model S, Tesla put a bunch of small metal battery cells into a plastic box and then put those plastic boxes inside a big metal box and then put that inside the frame. With the structural pack, Tesla utilizes their new large diameter 4680 battery cells and they go straight into a big flat metal box along with the cooling system and battery management. Then every empty space left inside is filled with a high density ultra sticky adhesive foam, and the box is sealed up. This battery pack now becomes even more rigid than the traditional dedicated frame section that it replaces. Then flanking the battery are two giga castings for the front and rear frame sections. This is the biggest visual difference in skateboard version two. There's a lot more bulk around the wheels. Where the old skateboard had the suspension system just kind of sticking up and floating in the air, the new platform includes the wheel wells and crash rails into the base platform. So instead of having to lower that stuff down onto the skateboard and then attach all of the suspension linkages and stuff, now everything is integrated. And thanks to the giga casting process, the world's largest die casting machines, those front and rear sections, are formed into single chunks of metal. So the entire structure of the skateboard is now just three big components bolted together. More efficient, more integrated, more production friendly. And not only does the battery pack serve double duty as the frame, it also now becomes the cabin floor of the vehicle interior. 
In the previous skateboard, the battery pack was under the floor. Now in version two, the battery pack is the floor. So that means you can lay down the carpet, the seats, and center console on the skateboard, making it even more integrated with the vehicle as a whole. At this point, all you need to add to the skateboard would be a steering wheel and pedals, and it could be a functional electric vehicle on its own. This means that the outer shell with the low voltage electronics installed can be assembled simultaneously to the skateboard. Then the two meet up on the production line, they drop the shell on top of the skateboard, attach a few bolts, and your Tesla Model Y is ready for finishing touches and final inspection. So the reason that Tesla developed their own platform is twofold. Number one, to increase the performance and efficiency of their vehicle. And number two, make it easier to manufacture. Then the secret sauce, thing number three, if you will, is to never be satisfied with what you have and always be striving for better results from thing one and thing two. That is true innovation. That is how winning companies operate. Losers spend $10 million to build one single platform and then throw it in the garbage when the fossil fuel companies refuse to play with you. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.